So we're going to switch gears uh, to that other toe-tapping musical extravaganza called The Count of Monte Cristo. <laughs> Which actually, I believe that there is a musical version of, of that. That's not what you're seeing this year. Uh, instead, we're, uh, uh, we are going to be seeing a piece of American theater history uh, on the OSF Elizabethan stage. Uh, so uh, I'd love to uh, have Marcella tell us a little bit about uh, what is this Count of Monte Cristo why are we doing it, and why are we so excited about it? Well, uh, hi everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here and talk about this incredibly unique piece, which I think very few people have had the privilege to witness. Um, this piece uh, was written by Charles Fetcher in year... 1870 and then uh, revised and adapted by James O'Neill, uh, who's uh, Eugene O'Neill's father in year. Uh, so he, he bought the rights in 1885, first performed in 1883, when the principal actor died in the wings after the first performance. That's a terrible omen. He didn't pick up on it. Uh, and instead, a, ver a very young James O'Neill uh, picked up the role and, uh, and, and basically, you know, turned the world on its edge. It was amazing. Um, so James O'Neill performed this piece through his lifetime, and this piece became his bread and butter. And he performed it at a time that melodrama was a very big style uh, in, in American theater, in the American theater canon. Melodrama means music drama. Um, and it's a style that was overtly theatrical, overtly big, where emotions and passions were very out there. And then after melodrama, uh, theater started to become much more realistically based and much more sort of truthful. The style of acting shifted. And then what we've seen through the years since has been a more realistic kind of theater. And uh, we're very rooted in realism, I think, right now. We come from that. And in my interest in this piece was to find the joy and the, the sweep of melodrama and the size of melodrama, but also coming from a very honest, truthful place within ourselves and for the actors as well. Partly because of the story, the story of Monte Cristo and the novel of Monte Cristo, which is in a lot of people's imagination. Many, many people have read this novel. So it's a very familiar epic story and, and people have lived with this novel, which is like this thick, yeah. you know, over the course of a summer or over the course of a month or maybe those avid readers have read it very, very fast. I'm yeah. not sure, but it's Just a... Yeah, out of, out of curiosity, how, uh, raise your hand if you've read this novel. See? There you go. <laughs> so after reading the play and, and looking at this melodrama, uh, I had this great thirst of going back to the novel and seeing what the, what the novel was offering and thinking also about what could be in people's imaginations that we really needed to honor. So you probably won't see every character that there is in the novel. It's impossible in three hours to sort of present all the twists and turns that the novel offers. But you'll see the primary ca characters and the primary events of the story being played in a very playful theatrical style. And that's what we've been finding with this just terrific cast at OSF in adding a lot of music to it, a lot of movement, a lot of sweep, there's some sword fights, and uh, in great plot. It's really a plot-driven story, almost like a detective novel where you're finding who's doing what and who's after what and who's, who's gonna do what next, so that there's a lot of suspense, there's a lot of tension, and there's a lot of drive to the story. Um, of course, the story centers on Edmond Dantes, who was wrongly accused of treason and sent to prison in the Chateau d'If, the infamous Chateau d'If, this island in isolation where he spent 18 years. And uh, in those 18 years, he met uh, Faria, of course, and he learned a lot of things from Faria. 
he ultimately frees himself and seeks revenge and, uh, and, and gets what he wants, but in different ways that you would expect it. It's also at the core for me, it's a really strong love story. Uh, of these two young people that are coming together after his long voyage at sea, and right as they're about to get married, he gets snatched and put into prison. And this woman now pregnant has to find her way, raise her son, and her story gets taken somewhere else uh, before they're able to sort of come together. Uh, there's a lot of struggle in that coming together. Um, I think one of the things that really inspired me uh, from the piece was first the melodramatic style, uh, but second of all, just the space where we're doing it, the Elizabethan Theater, which is an epic space, it's huge, and it's uh, not an easy space to conquer, because you have to have a certain panache to act in that space. You have to reach out to the audience very far from you, uh, and it's, um, it's challenging in many ways, but it also invites sort of a, um, an epic style that I really wanted to embrace. So uh, that's been interesting to work on and to conquer and to strive for. And tomorrow we, we have our first preview. And I'm, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> 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 and slightly nervous, of course. Um, but very exciting. I think we're poised to really sort of uh, what I call sing to the audience in a very strong way with a story. Fabulous. So, so, so you touched a little bit on, uh, on, on how, how essential music is to a genre called melodrama, uh, music drama. Uh, can you tell us a little, a little bit about what the, like what the world of music and movement is like in this world uh, and how it helps to, to tell the story, this really epic, sweeping, 18-year-long story? Yeah, if you think of silent films, you have people that are behaving in very clear physical ways accompanied by a piano score, usually, and some subtitles of, you know, the text when they speak. And this style really echoes those silent movies where, um, where events were physicalized, where dialogue was physicalized, and they physicalized every, everything very large. You know, their eyes are popping up and, <laughs> and they're making big gestures about everything. And the music is going ta dam ta dam you know, so it's really pointing out the tension and the suspension and the action. And uh, so, again, we're using elements of that. It's not as large and sort of, um, humorous as that because there's a lot of darkness in the piece and what Jeff was talking about that mixture of drama and comedy we're writing right in that line where there's moments and characters that are obviously comedic you know and then you'll hear plucking piano going along ta -da 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 or there's places where there's the villains come in and you'll hear some cellos going do 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 <laughs> you know, so we're, we're punctuating and having fun, uh, underscoring a lot of characters and underscoring where there's villainy or where there's treachery. Um, the fights have a comedic element to them too and comedic sound effects. So we're, uh, we're playing with that, with that edge between drama and comedy. And, and, and just to, to be uh, to be clear, like, like you know, when we talk about fights, I, I don't know, you know, for for many of us who think about the the novels of Dumas, uh, we often think of a novel like The Three Musketeers, for example, which is just you know one sword fight in the street after another, and and, and there is a climactic sword fight that was actually it's quite fabulous in this production, uh, and I don't want to give it away, but uh, but in, in terms of, of the like the, the kind of thriller aspect of the story. Uh, it's not. It's not the Three Musketeers. It, it's a. It, it's a different story by Dumas. Uh, and, and just as, as a bit of trivia, Dumas wrote those two novels in the same year, the Three Musketeers and the Count of Monte Cristo in 1844. They they started publication. I think Musketeers like started in April. This one started over the summer, like July, August. Can you imagine what a year that must have been like for him? 
Like, like he set Paris on fire uh, with these two stories. Um, so I, I, I'm going to go ahead and, and open it up to, uh, to, to your questions. Um, but I, I think it's fair to say that even for, for those of us who, who know the Count of Monte Cristo pretty well, there are going to be surprises in this that you may not expect in terms of story and characters and how we tell it. She, she nods cryptically. Yes. Fantastic. Yes.